Hey everybody, John the Other here, obviously. And uh, I have just seen a review of the movie Mad Max Fury Road, uh, the review done by Sandman. And Sandman kind of surprised me when he said he didn't think that that was a strongly feminist movie. Because I was so absolutely amazed by how much of a feminist movie it is. Now, I'm going to do a more in-depth review. That won't be today. I'm just going to give you the short summary. Number one, it's not an action movie. It, I know it looks like an action movie. It's filled with action. It's got a, you know, this protracted, endless car chase on this road in the outback of Australia somewhere. But it's, it's actually an art film. It's a movie about a dream world. It's, it's not supposedly a dystopian future, you know, the Mad Max collapsed economy where gasoline is precious and, you know, life is uh, cheap and all this other business. We, we always hear about the feminists talking about their utopia, the, 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 the female-led, the female-ruled over world, right? Where all the problems created by the male world and war and violence and rape and all this other business goes away because females will finally be in charge and they'll get the dream world they want. This movie isn't a utopia, it's a dystopia, it's a very uh, uh, bad future, but this is actually what feminists want. I'm not saying this is the outcome that they're going to get, you know, because they're, they don't understand the consequences of their activism. This, the, the, the world, the, and it's a dream world, it's a mystical religious world filled with religious iconography. It's not actually plot driven. It's not where an event has a consequence. Uh, it's not where people have motivations that make sense. This um, film depicts a magical, otherworldly realm, and that is the feminist dream, this dystopic future calamity world, where you know life is extremely brutal, and death comes easily, and all this stuff. It should be watched by MGTOWs, and you know, other guys in the manosphere. It's not a, a world free of violence, and war, and starvation, and free from rape, and etc., that feminists actually want. No, the, in reality, the true dream that they want is this dream world projected in the Mad Max movie. I'll, I'll just give you one little tidbit. Every single male character in that movie falls into three categories. The, uh, there are leaders. They're the leaders of the world in the Mad Max world are all uh, male. They're all men. But they're all disfigured. They're all incomplete human beings. They're all... Uh, twisted in some way. They're, they're damaged. They're not complete. They're each uh, warped or distorted or, or broken or, you know, deformed humans. The, the remaining men in the movie are all uniformly painted white, shaven-headed, interchangeable drones. They're, they're zombies. And they are killed off like flies. Just, their deaths are completely inconsequential. And then the third category of man in the movie is Max himself. Max, the title character of the movie, is the only complete whole human being who is a man in the movie. And the reason he's a complete man is that he serves the interests of the women. That's just a glimpse of the religious imagery in this movie. And I say, I'm going to go through the whole thing in, in greater depth in a future video that will probably last over an hour. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and have a lovely day. So this is just a reminder that on Monday, 24th of August, at Mahoney's Pub on the UBC campus at 7 o'clock, I will be there, along with Diana Davison and a representative from CAFE, to meet with you if you're any part of the Manosphere in Vancouver or a UBC student interested in men's issues. This is definitely a meeting for you to come to. Mahoney's Pub, uh, tomorrow, Monday, 24th of August, 7 p.m. I hope to see you there. And, of course, thanks for listening, and have a lovely day.